My name is Matt Chapman. I study business studies at Leeds Beckett University. This is my vlog where I'll be discussing my interpretation of the marketing myths for the module Foundation for Marketing. The information outlined in this video is relevant to what I've learned from lectures 1 and 2. I will be discussing what marketing is, the myths of marketing and how they coincide with reality, marketing orientations and, how I, and what I've learned making this vlog. So what is marketing? When I hear the word marketing the first thing that comes to my mind is the process of meeting customer needs and wants by understanding them and developing ways for products or service to be provided. The American Marketing Association defines marketing as the set of institutions and processes for creating, communicating, delivering and exchanging offerings that have value for customers, clients, partners and society at large. Now that we know what marketing is, we can start to discuss some of the marketing myths. The first myth that I would like to discuss is that a big name brand can always sustain a higher price. When I first heard this myth, I didn't quite understand how it was a myth. Look at brands like Nike, Apple, Samsung, I could go on forever, these companies have all sustained a high price in the market. However, after doing some research it became evident why this myth is true and the truth is the concept of marketing. To dispel this myth I will use the example of the former camera industry giant Kodak. There was a time when if you heard the word camera, Kodak would probably come to your mind. Kodak were caught in the era where digital technology was developing exponentially, however they failed to recognise truly how important the role of the new technology was going to play in their market and simply tried to ignore the new developments as if they were going to go out of fashion. Because of this, and their negligence, the, this big name brand failed and were no longer able to sustain their high prices as because of the poor marketing behaviour they failed to provide their customers with what they wanted. The second myth I would like to discuss is that the only people in a business who are responsible for marketing are those who work in the marketing department. This statement could be more of a myth if it tried. To explain this myth in a wider detail, let's use a real world example. Imagine a member of a political party was photographed whilst in public caught littering. When this hypothetical picture makes it to the newspapers, the actions of the politician will be painted as the actions of the entire political party they represent. This means that it isn't possible for the marketing to be solely the responsibility of the marketing department, as in an incident like this, it would be out of the hands of that department. In the day and age that we are in, this myth is a very interesting and important one to consider. Some people would argue that marketing through social media sites such as Twitter and Instagram isn't an effective way of marketing. However, marketing through social media is arguably one of the most effective techniques as it gets information to a wide and varied audience, at the same time as costing the business nothing to produce. Let's take Adidas for example. On their Instagram account alone they have 7.4 million followers. Before the rise of social media, if Adidas wanted to reach this amount of people when marketing their products, they would have to spend money on marketing campaigns such as TV, radio and film. Now they have such a large following on social media, they post pictures and videos virtually every single day whilst also working on marketing campaigns that cost money. For companies like Adidas this is huge because they can now come up with the ideas that they want in a matter of minutes or hours and have it posted on social media for millions to see. satisfied customer is a loyal customer. This myth is a very easy one to dispel as I'm sure all of you can think of a time where you were satisfied with a recent purchase only for a better product to be released a short time later which made you regret buying the product. An example of this myth in my life was when I purchased a laptop from Sony only to realise that two weeks later Toshiba had re released a new laptop that was cheaper and had better specifications. After this happened I was no longer satisfied with Sony and I stopped being loyal to them with my future purchases. Now let's move on to marketing orientations. So what is meant by marketing orientation? In short, a company's marketing orientation is the philosophy that they use when meeting the needs and wants of their customers. It is the way they approach selling their products and the way they appear to their target market. The orientation that a business uses when marketing its products is everybody's responsibility. It's a way of doing business, it should be ethical and sustainable, and it should always place the customer at the heart of business decisions. Now we know what marketing orientation means, let's talk about the different types of orientation that companies use. The production 
production orientation follows the belief system that customers will buy the products that they find in the market. When under this orientation, companies produce products in high volumes with low marginal risk and also low research and development. Products operating under the pro production orientation are not distributed to a particular target market. It is believed that the more awareness you create for the product, the more people will buy it if available. An example of a business using this orientation is McDonald's. For years, McDonald's have provided their customers with a high volume of product by ensuring that their restaurants are located all over the world. When a customer arrives in the restaurant, they know whatever they demand will be on the menu. As the orientation states that the business will stack their produce high, ready for customers to purchase. Product orientation is best described as the company solely focusing on products alone. A company orientated this way focuses all their efforts on producing quality products while selling them at the right price to allow customers to understand how they differ from the competition. When following this orientation, the business doesn't have to worry about whether or not the product will sell, as their main focus is that the product is the best quality it can be, whilst also sold at a price that is reasonable and economic. A great example of product orientation succeeding is when Sony released the Walkman. The Walkman was a portable MP3 player released to the market in 1979. When Sony created this product, they knew it was, wasn't what was being demanded at the time. We know this because the product ori orientation states the business focus on quality and price, not demand. However, because the product was such good quality and served such a great purpose, people highly demanded it as soon as it was released and realised how great it would work for them. Because Sony followed this orientation so well, the success of the Walkman resulted in Sony going on to produce numerous additional music listening services. Sales orientation means that a business sells what they produce. This means that the products they supply are not necessarily the best, but can gain a large market share. A sales oriented business relies heavily on promotion by using the mass media and other forms of promotion such as social media. Strong branding is very important for these types of business as they understand that their products are not necessarily the best that are out there, but if they promote the products effectively and produce products effectively, then customers will come. Car companies such as Honda and Toyota heavily, heavily rely on the sales oriented philosophy when selling their cars. marketing orientation. The marketing orientation follows the guidelines of selling what the customer wants. Companies operating under this orientation often end up as the market leader as they seek to innovate with their products and services. Understanding what the customer wants and needs is a great way to do business as it means that companies produce products based on what their customers want and not what the company believes the customers want. Nike and Coca-Cola are both seen as marketing orientated companies. To understand this, let's refer back to the behaviour they have used in the past. Companies like Nike and Coca-Cola understand that customers are not solely interested in their core products. Nike's core products being products such as running shoes, gym wear, etc. And Coca-Cola's core product being the original recipe, Coca-Cola. Because the two companies use this orientation and listen to their customer wants and needs, we see products such as Cherry Coke and Nike skateboarding shoes. When products like Cherry Coke and shoes for skateboarding were released, to some it seemed a bit obscure. But as Nike and Coca-Cola predicted, there was a high demand for products like these, as customers had been asking them for them for a long time. When I first started this module, I definitely thought that marketing was a lot more vague and simple than it really is in reality. Something I found very interesting was the arguments against marketing, such as how it creates unnecessary products that can deplete natural resources, or that it encourages people to purchase things they cannot afford. I used to believe that marketing was only really used by bigger companies, however I now know that small, medium, large and global organisations use it. Finally, I learned that there are a lot of myths that must always be considered that surround marketing, and that believing them can have tragic effects on the success of a business. That brings an end to my vlog, thank you for listening.